Ushishi is a Japanese supernatural, slice of life, adventure manga series turned anime television series written and illustrated by Yuki Urshibara. Serialized in November of 1999 through Kodansha's afternoon season Zoken, the manga was first adapted into an anime by the Japanese animation studio Artland Inc. on October 23rd of 2005. After a while, you start to see specks of light off in the distance that slowly form into a river. Written and illustrated by Yuki Urshibara, a Japanese manga artist known by the pen name Soyogo Shima, Mushishi follows the journey of Jinko as he travels from place to place to research Mushi and aid people suffering from problems caused by them. Described as life in its purest form, Mushi are the most primitive of all life forms and are seemingly magical creatures that depend upon either forest or human life in order to survive, resulting in most people considering them to be a form of parasite. Voiced by Yuto Nakano in the original version and by Travis Willingham in the English dub, Jinko acts as a Mushishi or Mushi Master in the English translation, a person who has the ability to see Mushi, a skill which is called Yushitsu, and travels from place to place and attends to situations that involve Mushi. The primary reason for their constant need to travel is mostly due to the items Mushishi carry, which allow them to capture, ward off, attract, or even kill Mushi, all of which results in many Mushishi unavoidably attracting Mushi. Though Mushi can affect humans in harmful and downright malicious ways, Mushi themselves are not evil. As emphasized by Jinko in the series, they, like most parasites, are simply trying to live, with Jinko acting on the theory that humans and the Mushi should live in harmony, an ideology that comes in contrast with other Mushi masters, who destroy Mushi, often with the purpose of aiding humans affected by them. Characterized by his white hair, pale skin, and an unearthly green right eye, Shinko's attire is often noted by viewers as being far more modern than those worn by other characters we meet in his travels across Japan. Though the year in which the series takes place in is not entirely made clear, there exists some 19th century technology while during a time when Japan is still a closed country. A 214 year long period in Japanese history when the isolationist foreign policy of the Japanese Tokugawa shogunate known as Sokoku was put into place and made it so the relations and trade between Japan and other countries were severely limited while also keeping its more common people from leaving the country. Therefore, placing the series in an imaginary time between the Edo, 1603 to 1867, and Meiji periods, 1868 to 1912. Some fans theorized that the series was in fact originally intended to be set in a more modern Japan, but the author later changed her mind. This theory seems to be based on two elements, a supposed interview with the author where she says exactly this, an interview which we were unable to find, and a compilation of short works titled Filament, which is a supposed prototype for Mushishi, that's set in a more modern Japan, though Yuki herself sees these shorts as something entirely separate, nothing more than a quote, backbone, as it quote, takes place in a very different fictional time and place, end quote. Other fans disagree, however, often theorizing that while traveling, Jinko was gifted his clothing after helping a village, or villager specifically, with a problem related to Mushi, and it is in fact meant to be something either Dutch or American in origin, with a secondary theory that Yuki intentionally did this to create an atmosphere of an outsider such so someone who does not belong to Jinko's character. It's far from what he imagined it once would be. He's just a normal worker who actually just got fired at an automotive company. <laughs> Finally. Debuting as a one-shot, a work published as a single standalone story, rather than as part of an ongoing series, in Kodansha's Monthly Afternoon, a sign in Japanese monthly manga magazine, March 1999 issue on January 25th of 1999, the series was first serialized in Kodansha's Afternoon Season Zokan, a seasonal spin-off of Monthly Afternoon that lasted for 14 issues from 1999-2002, before being moved to monthly afternoon on December 25th of 2002 until the release of the final installment on August 25th of 2008. Before going public as a one-shot in monthly afternoon in January of 1999, the author submitted a rough first draft to Mushishi in a contest sponsored by Monthly Afternoon in the winter of 1998 and subsequently won the Newcomer Afternoon Shiki Award. This rough draft was supposedly later renamed to The Light in the Eyelids, aka Chapter 4, Episode 2 of the anime, 
when the series was picked up by Kodansha about a year later. During its serialization in afternoon season Zokan, Kodansha began collecting the now 50 chapters into 10 Tankaban volumes, a Japanese term often used in reference to independent volumes of a single manga series, and published them under the afternoon KC line from November 20th of 2000 to the 21st of November of 2008. Five years later, on November 21st, 2013, Kodansha started to re-release the series as another 10 volumes, but this time using the Isoban format, a collector's edition volume that's generally more expensive and lavish with special features such as unique covers, higher quality paper, a special slipcase, and so on. For their KC Deluxe line, until July 23rd, 2014, when they released the 10th and final volume of this line. An English language translation of the series was announced at the 2006 Comic Con, a comic book convention, and non profit multi genre entertainment event held annually in San Diego, California, during Del Rey Manga's panel, the now defunct manga publishing imprint of Del Rey Books, and had its first volume released on January 30th of 2007. The last volume of this line, released by Del Rey on July 27th of 2010, was different to the others, however, as it was a combined edition covering volumes 8 through 10. Four years after the release of Del Rey's final combined volume, between July 29th and August 12, 2014, Kodansha USA, a New York-based subsidiary of Kodansha, Japan's largest publishing company, also released an English language volume translation of the manga in digital format. Outside the West, the manga was also licensed and subsequently published for other countries such as in France by Kana, in Italy by Star Comics, in South Korea by Daiwan C1, and in Spain by Norma Editorial. Besides the main line of chapters originally released all the way back in the early 2000s, two additional chapters were published in the January and February issues of Kodansha's Afternoon Magazine on November 25th of 2013 and December 25th of 2013, respectively. These two chapters were eventually collected into a single Tangabon volume by Kodansha under the title Mushishi Special Edition and released on April 23rd, 2014. Simple things like how characters move their hands and how they change their facial expressions is so much more immersive than Pleasant dreams. Aside from the manga, the world and characters of Yuki Urshibara's Mushishi were also adapted into an animated television series. Adapted by the Japanese animation studio Artline Inc., the series was directed by Hiroshi Nagahama and produced by a group called the Mushishi Production Committee, a group which consists of Marvelous Entertainment, a multinational corporation that produced animation, music, video game, and television series, Avex Entertainment, a Japanese entertainment conglomerate headquartered in Tokyo, Japan, and Sky Perfect Well Think, a Japanese content production and development enterprise. Originally airing the first 20 episodes between October 23rd, 2005 and March 12th, 2006 on Fuji TV, the last six episodes of the series were broadcasted on May 7th of 2006 by BS Fuji, a Japanese television network operated by the Fuji TV Inc. from May 14th to June 18th of the same year. From January 25th to September 27th of 2006, Marvelous Entertainment and AVEX collected the 26 episodes into 5 DVDs and at the same time listed a different set of 9 DVDs for rental. Then on March 8th of 2008, a DVD box set containing all 26 episodes in the form of 9 discs and 2 added special bonuses of a special hand towel and a 12-page booklet titled Mushishi's Work Material Collection was released and swiftly followed up by a 4-disc Blu-ray box set that came with a special bonus disc and a 32-page booklet filled with illustrations and respective commentary on March 27th of 2009. A special limited edition DVD box set which included three special postcards, a 12-inch action figure of Jinko, a special CD containing a full playlist of all the songs in the series, and a unique foldable flyer was also released on November 29th of 2006. As for in the West, Funimation announced that they had acquired the license for the animated series in January of 2007, an announcement which may not have actually surprised that many, as in October of 2006, Funimation actually sent out numerous cease and desist letters regarding fan subs of a number of titles that had not previously been associated with Funimation. Besides Mushishi, the other titles amongst the letters include XXX Holic TV, Ragnarok the Animation, Suzuka, Sakura Tyson, Le Nouveau Paris, and Atashi in Chi. To promote the series release, Funimation hosted the series director at the 2007 Anime Expo, an American anime convention held in Los Angeles, California, and organized by the Nonprofit Society for the Promotion of Japanese Animation from June 29th to July 2nd, and exhibited the first four episodes in various theaters across both New York and Texas, such as Imagine Asian Theater, Studio Movie Grill, 
and Alamo Draft House on July 23rd and 24th of the same year. The series was subsequently released in the West by Funimation as six DVDs between July 31st, 2007 to February 26th, 2008, and streaming on its own channel, Hulu, Juiced, Anime News Network, Crackle, as well as on Comcast. Much like Japan, the series was also compiled and released by Funimation as four box sets with all episodes on December 16th of 2008, October 6th of 2009, July 6th of 2010, and November 8th of 2011, respectively. In the United Kingdom, the series was released between October 27th of 2007 and November 17th of 2008 by Revelation Films as six DVDs and by Man Band Entertainment on January 14th of 2009 for the PAL region a television publication territory that covers most of Asia, Africa, Europe, South America, and Oceania. A second season, Time Mushishi Zoku Show, started airing on April 5, 2014, featuring the same director of the same studio and main cast from the first season. It lasted a total of 20 episodes with a short break between the two halves, with episodes 1 through 10 being one half, and episodes 11 through 20 being the second half, and ended on December 21st of 2014. The first DVD compilation of the season was released on July 23, 2014 in Japan by Aniplex, with additional limited edition having a set of 8 Mushifuda, a type of Japanese card game, and one of the flower card games with the simplest rules, with illustrations by Yuki Urshibara, a bonus CD containing a soundtrack of the season, and a special illustration card. In March of 2014, the second season was licensed for stream by Aniplex of America and Crunchyroll as Mushishi Next Passage. And in November of the same year, Mad Men Entertainment acquired its home media release rights for Australia and licensed the series for streaming and made it available on its site, Anime Lab. Artland's Mushishi boasts it all, losing none of the original belt. In all your studies, have you ever heard of a liquid Mushi that can travel from place to place? A living swamp. Outside the award-winning manga and equally praised anime adaptation, the story and characters of Yuki Urshibara's Mushi have been made into several other mediums. Since the beginning of its run in November of 1999, several books based on Mushishi have been released, including a guidebook, a form of information typically about a place with intended use being for visitors or tourists, released by Kodansha on January 23, 2006, titled Mushishi Official Book, an art book and production diary filled with staff commentaries on the anime series production, which were released on June 30th and July 20th of 2007, respectively. Two anime Hoshijin selection books titled Feast Edition and Thorn Edition, respectively, which include the original manga in the one-shot format arranged in the order of the anime broadcasting, which were released on April 23rd and May 14th of 2014. And lastly, on June 19th of 2015, a large format art book filled with every full color illustration related to Mushishi, including the initial sketches, was released by Kodansha. Composed by Toshio Musuda, a Japanese composer best known for his work on the hit 2002 anime series Naruto, the music for both anime adaptations were released as three soundtrack albums by Marvelous Entertainment, Genon Entertainment, and Aniplex on March 24th and July 23rd, 2006 for the first season soundtrack and on June 25th of 2015 for the soundtrack of the second season. Based on the 2013 two-chapter side story released in the January and February issues of Kodansha's Afternoon Magazine, a special titled The Shadow That Devours the Sun was broadcasted on Tokyo MX, Tushigi TV, Gunma TV, and BS11 on January 4th of 2014 and streamed by Niku Nikyo with Yudo Nakano and Mika Doi reprising their roles as Jinko and the narrator. Premiering at the 2006 Venice International Film Festival, a live-action feature film directed by Kotsuro Otomo, Child Mushishi the Movie, was released in Japanese theaters on March 24th of 2007, starring Joe Adagiri, a Japanese actor and musician born in Tsuyama, Okayama Prefecture, as Jinko. The movie is similar to the anime adaptations, as it functions as a series of short stories strung together in a pre-technological Japan, where Mushi exists, with most of the events being retellings of those already seen in the animated series. Developed by Tenki and published by Marvelous Entertainment, a video game adaptation of Mushishi for the Nintendo DS was released in Japan on January 31st, 2008 under the title of Mushishi Amafuro Sato. During an event held at Loft Plus One in Shinjuku, Tokyo, a live music video in Japan where you can enjoy live performances while simultaneously eating and drinking, on January 26th to commemorate the release of the game, a unique drink named Kuki a drink which is seen in the first episode of the original animated series was served to both those attending and the performers at the venue. 
Lastly, from March 18th to March 29th of 2005, a stage reading event, a form of theater without sets or full costumes where the actors read from scripts while being seated, standing in fixed positions, or while performing minimal stage movement, which adapted six chapters of the manga into six separate performances, was held in Tokyo. Directed by Hiroshi Nakahama, with an original script written by Kazuki Nakamura, and the animated voice actors reprising their respective characters, production used a new type of stage production by introducing augmented reality on its visuals, which were designed to span a 270 degree field of view. Stories of Mushi, animals and humans living together, suggests that Tanyu's personhood is not inherently abstract. that introduced you to me, that must make you one too, right? Nice try, but no, I'm a Mushi master. Thank you for watching. My name is Jacko. If you want to know more about me, check out my Twitter. If you want to watch slash read the series in its entirety for yourself, as well as read slash watch the additional content related to the manga and anime adaptations, you can find links to everything mentioned in both the description and pinned comment below. Make sure to hit subscribe and that like button below if you enjoyed the video, as well as leave a comment as to which anime, movie, or game series you'd like us to cover in a future video. If you enjoyed this video and would like to not only see them continue but improve in quality, consider supporting us on Patreon. Link in the description below. Part or two part episodes, and there's two seasons, and then like a special or two, and like a movie. I've seen everything.